Korean popular music, otherwise known as K-pop, began its journey just over two decades ago and has become a global phenomenon in the last 10 years, becoming the leading factor in what's known as the Hallyu or Korean wave, the spread of Korean culture across the world. Hello everyone, my name is Derek, otherwise known as dare to be and I'm here redoing this old video of mine to update this video to today's latest moments, as well as touch on things that elaborate on certain moments in K-pop history. In this video special, I'm going to discuss the pivotal and monumental moments in the history of K-pop that has allowed it to become a powerful music genre that it is today. Please keep in mind that this video is not meant to be a video to highlight every single achievement or award given across history. I want you to ask yourself, did this moment change K-pop history going forward? Did it make an impact or was it an achievement only reflected on the artist's career? Please keep that in mind about how important it was for K-pop going forward as an industry. In the 1970s, Lee Suman, the founder of Now SM Entertainment, was a famous musician in Korea. He had famous songs like Happiness and One Piece of a Dream. He eventually formed a metal band, Lee Suman and 365 Days in Korea. But at the time, the government heavily censored media, and thus his vision of the band was greatly watered down and success was greatly hindered. He left Korea in the 1980s to move to the United States to study his first passion in the field of robotics and engineering at California State University. While there, he saw popular acts like Michael Jackson, Cyndi Lauper, and Madonna hit it big in the U.S. popular music industry as well as the MTV revolution at the time. He saw the choreography, artistry, and what worked in the Western market. It was during this time he felt he had a formula to create the music to bypass the Korean government's censorship and make something for the audience in his home country. Back in the 1980s, Korea lacked the ability to export its popular culture, let alone not even having an industry worth promoting internationally. A pivotal moment for Korea was the 1988s host near the Olympics, where the government removed the restraints on foreign travel. This then allowed the country to become more exposed to the outside world and to learn more of the global music trends. Political freedoms were mirrored by musical experimentation, and musicians began to realize that they had to attempt to be distinct if they were to succeed in gaining an audience. More and more musicians appropriated those musical styles. It was not long after the Olympics that domestic production of Korean cultural products started to grow. Profits and nationalistic pride rose, and Korean consumers began to take part in their culture in ways that they never did before. The birth of K-pop is often regarded to have begun in 1992 with the debut of Soteji and Boys which comprised of Soteji, Lee Juno, and the now founder of YG Entertainment, Yang Hyun Suk. Their debut in the 90s was the first of its kind in the Korean music market with their song Anan Arayo, or I Know. They were a group that changed the face of music in Korea and were labeled as the first successful Korean band in mainstream music thanks to their innovative hybridization of creatively mixing genres of rap, soul, rock, techno, punk, and trot. In Korea, they're credited for introducing rapping during verses and singing choruses in a pop style with energetic dance moves that we are familiar with in today's K-pop music. While this was new to Korea at the time, this essentially took the best of Western cultural music and tailored it to the Korean audience. Lee Suman eventually went on to create SM Entertainment in 1995 and became the first music entrepreneur in South Korea and masterminded a new system to recruit, train, and produce new pop stars referred to as idols, where they are skilled in singing, dancing, and acting. SM's first group to debut under the new company was HOT in 1996. They are regarded as the first idol boy group under the formula and vision that Lee Suman developed. Their success paved the way for many idol groups to follow such as Shinwa, SES, Finkel, Zetskis, Babyvox, and G.O.D. YG Entertainment was formed by So Teji and Boys Young Hyun Suk in 1996, while singer Park Jin Young formed his own label called JYP Entertainment in 1997. Competition began, and the industry of K-pop was officially underway.
By the 21st century, K-pop was already in its second generation of artists, and by the early 2000s, physical sales in Korea had begun to decline and digital piracy had begun to rise, as Korea's legal digital sales market was not well established yet. Therefore, Korea had begun to set its sights on going global. Even to this day, the United States and Japan currently rank as the number one and two biggest music markets in the world. Korea, prior to 2013, wasn't even in the top 10, and so the country aspired to penetrate the most coveted markets to achieve an even greater return on investment. To put things into perspective, employing figures from 2000, South Korea's music industry accounted for 30 million US dollars, while the US generated 14 billion US dollars and Japan made 6.4 billion US dollars. Therefore, South Korea was limited in its domestic market, so the K-pop industry sought to turn itself into an export market. Shortly after seeing success with the first idol groups like H.O.T. and Shinwa, Isu Man began to set his sights on the Japanese market and initiated what's called the BOA Project. Pioneered as the first female singer who achieved success in Japan, Isu Man claimed that SM reportedly spent roughly 3 million US dollars in training BOA for three years in intense dance, vocal, and language training. In a time where YouTube and social media had not yet existed, BOA made her Korean debut in August of 2000 at the age of 13. Her launch in Korea was deemed mediocre, but SM had collaborated with the top Japanese music company AVEX as they foresaw potential in the Japanese market. Boa's name and image had a cultural ambiguity as she was not packaged as a Korean star, but instead underwent a sort of assimilation process by being able to sing, speak, and present herself as a Japanese star. She was thus repackaged and de-Koreanized, or Japanized, which was arguably the key to her success in Japan and became the rule for becoming successful in Japan. This now classic technique has proven successful for the K-pop industry, as Boa's debut album Listen to My Heart, as well as her Valenti and Best of Soul albums, all each impressively sold over a million albums. This significant feat came at a time when Korea removed its prohibition on Japanese cultural imports in 2002 since World War II, thus making her the first Korean and foreign artist to reach number one on the Japanese Oricon charts, as well as her first six albums all claiming the top spot. Boa paved the way for Korean music labels to consider the Japanese market and also helped further K-pop's growth. In February 2000, the first Korean idol group H.O.T. held a monumental concert in China for which the local Beijing Youth Report coined the term Hali Wave, which means somewhat intimidating cultural penetration from Korea. In April 2005, inspired by BOA's success in Japan, SM's TVXQ set their sights on their very own Japanese debut with Stay With Me Tonight. The popularity steadily rose as they continued to climb the charts with each new single until they finally hit number one on Japanese Oricon with Purple Line in 2008, making the group the first foreign male group or boy band to top the Japanese charts and second Korean artist after BOA to do so. Both BOA and TVXQ proved how K-pop can successfully cross borders through the execution of strict localization and hybridization strategies. And the fact that I managed to present this moment without even discussing Yu Chun's infamous lyric of him touching himself on Purple Line is a huge success for myself. I really wanna touch myself. Oh wait, just did. Moving on. <laughs> In November 2005, Super Junior was the first K-pop group to feature the first foreign idol member Hang Gin, or Hang Kyung as he was called in Korea. Back in the day though, SM was reportedly fined for putting him on more than three different television stations, as there were restrictions for Chinese passport holders to perform on a certain amount of stations. In doing so, Hang Kyung was forced to wear a mask on stage during promotions until he was finally revealed to be a real member of the group, instead of the initially thought of as backup dancer to which Hee Cho revealed to the public three months after their debut. While SM had used BOA and TVXQ to focus on the Japanese market, their sites for Super Junior were geared towards the rising music market of China. In 2008, Super Junior M, the M standing for Mandarin, made their official debut in China, making them the first international group in the country. In 2007, there was a resurgence of popularity for idol groups in Korea. 
The surge was led by Wonder Girls and Big Bangs, whose hits Tell Me and Lies were two of the most popular songs of the year. While idol groups had never completely faded out, 2007 had become a turning point that drove idol groups to the forefront of Korea's mainstream music. Many of the groups that debuted and gained popularity in 2007 and the two years that followed would go on to become the most recognizable names in K-pop to this day, leading to what would be called K-pop's golden age. Big Bang's Lies also set a new precedent as one of the first idol produced songs. Lies was massively successful and they broke the stereotype of factory produced idol songs in the K-pop genre. It went on to win several prestigious awards like Song of the Year at some award shows in Korea, proving that idols can write and compose hit songs and can be more than just pretty-faced, flashy performers the K-pop industry was stereotypically known for. Simultaneously, K-pop's golden age was also partly influenced by the explosive popularity of K-dramas throughout the Asia-Pacific region. K-dramas from 2004's Full House to 2009's Boys Over Flowers and You're Beautiful, then to 2010's Secret Garden backed massively popular OSTs throughout Asia. The dramas which starred several popular K-pop stars of today went on to have soundtracks that outperformed K-pop for several years in a row. The huge success of K-dramas arguably helped make K-pop stars and a genre more recognizable in new markets throughout the 2000s. Wonder Girls became the first K-pop act to go viral on YouTube with Nobody in late 2008 and early 2009. Catchy English lyrics and easy-to-learn choreography captivated many across the world and helped make K-pop reach the western shores. This success sparked a trend for more songs in 2009 to follow this formula. Super Junior Sorry Sorry was the next song to go viral internationally as it sparked endless flash mobs and became one of the most viewed K-pop videos at the time, while Girls' Generation's G was the biggest K-pop song in Korea, as it too was another K-pop song with globally friendly lyrics and choreography. G would then go on to become the most viewed K-pop music video for several years and was the first K-pop girl group music video to hit 100 million views on YouTube. The massive success of G helped solidify it as the song of the decade by several news sources and labeled girls' generations as the nation's girl group. As K-pop's golden age continued to shine in the eastern region, seasoned K-pop soloists Boa, Seven, and Rain all began their American debut attempts since the U.S. was the largest music market in the world. Starting in 2008, Boa released her American debut song, YG7 then dropped his first American debut song in June of 2009, and Rain had already begun to make a name for himself by topping Time Magazine's 100 Most Influential People Who Shape Our World in 2006 and 2007. He then would go on to appear briefly in 2009's Speed Racer and star on Ninja Assassin that same year. And after the Wonder Girls reached global success with Nobody, they too sought after the American market and released an English version of Nobody, and their debut attempts included a Nickelodeon movie, a US tour with the Jonas Brothers as opening act, and some American television promotions. All four artists sadly never achieved the desired results, but their experiences have demonstrated that K-pop and Korean music still needed time before reaching the success in the West. In July 2009, TVXQ members Jae Jung, Shia Junsu, and Yu Chun all filed a lawsuit against their label SM Entertainment citing slave contracts, excessive lengths of contracts, and unfair profit distributions. While this lawsuit would go on for several years and ultimately be in favor of now JYJ, this lawsuit shed light on the dark side of the industry internationally, causing many K-pop artists to have their own contracts renegotiated as well as leading the government to set a standard for a maximum of 7 years for all K-pop contracts going forward. Twenty-One's debut in 2009, initially labeled as the female counterpart to Big Bang, set a new standard on how K-pop girl groups were to be perceived. While they were technically not the first K-pop girl group to do girl crush or hip-hop concepts in the industry, they did manage to be branded as that style and upend what typical girl groups in K-pop were to be promoting themselves as. Following their debut, it was proven that girl groups could be successful without being quote-unquote girly. More companies became more willing to try this type of concept now because of 21's influence. In K-pop's post-golden age, the power of K-pop steadily grew across the world, as the genre began to make a name for itself in new markets thanks to the growing digital age. 
As the fan base of K-pop became more globalized, they worked together in new ways to help the second-gen K-pop acts achieve new monumental records internationally. For example, Big Bang won the Best Worldwide Act for the Asia-Pacific region with 58 million votes at the MTV EMAs in 2011, while Girls' Generation won Video of the Year at the YouTube Music Awards in 2013. While these are just two examples, it just goes to show how far the K-pop fandom has grown over the years to become a formidable force in the music and the new era of social media to help beat out already popular Western acts in this day and age. And while these feats were only just a few years ago, K-pop continued to grow and grow even more. Open Gangnam Style. Gangnam Style. Open Gangnam Style. Open Gangnam Style. In 2012, Gangnam Style put K-pop on a map in a way that no other song did. It was a song that forced YouTube to upgrade their view counter to accommodate numbers over 1 billion. And it is the most viewed K-pop video on YouTube, and was for several years the most viewed video of all time. People who were unaware of K-pop were definitely made aware of it after Psy went viral. At the time, everyone thought this song would be the watershed moment for K-pop to take off globally. The reaction to the rest of the non psy K-pop proved to be more lukewarm than expected, but it put the word K-pop into many more people's dictionaries and certainly contributed to widespread notoriety of K-pop as a genre. <laughs> In 2013, EXO became the first K-pop artist in over a decade to hit 1 million copies in album sales. This milestone was thanks to their global popularity and reach in new rising music markets such as China. While physical sales in general have been on a decline in the world, K-pop has managed to defy the trends and steadily grow their physical sales thanks to growing global appeal, a fan culture obsessed with supporting biases, and innovative album packaging that made albums worthwhile collectibles. On December 18, 2017, singer Jong Hyun of Shiny committed suicide after suffering several years of severe depression. His death caused the K-pop community to stop and the rest of the world to take notice once again on the dark side of the K-pop industry. While it is too soon to tell if his death has sparked a change for companies to treat their artists better and for Korea as a whole to accept and treat mental health properly, but one thing is for sure, he will never be forgotten, and as K-pop continues to grow, treatment of artists and mental and physical health of artists are sure to be in the spotlight. <laughs> BTS performed at the American Music Awards in November 2017. Marking what was the most high-profile appearance by a K-pop idol group, in other words, other than Psy, at any American mainstream music industry event. Their performance has only been one of numerous signs that K-pop is gaining ground in the U.S. and Western mainstream. K-pop now appears regularly on Billboard and YouTube charts, and new records keep getting set with each comeback by the likes of BTS, Blackpink, Twice, and more. While it waits to be seen how much this lists K-pop overall, there's no doubt that there are a good number of artists capturing attention outside of the original K-pop fan circles now. BTS has gone on in recent months to set new records such as the most viewed YouTube video in 24 hours, as well as being the first Korean artist to be nominated for a Grammy. Records continue to be set and the Western market has been broken. BTS has set the new layer in this foundation to help take K-pop in the now fourth generation. On January 28th, what's now called the Burning Sun Scandal all began after a nightclub was accused of assault from an incident that occurred back in November. Big Bang member Soongi was initially tied to the incident simply because he was part of the directorship for the club. Please keep in mind that this is still an ongoing investigation and what I'm presenting here is only a portion of what was brought forward by the police and the news outlets in the last few months. The investigation of this assault then led to accusations of a long list of illegal activities going on at the club. Then a whistleblower exposed up to 200,000 chat messages from the phone of singer Jung Jun Young, one of Sunni's good friends, which contained evidence of prostitution, bribery, police corruption, date rape, illegal spy cam filming, and illegal sharing of the spy cam footage. People implicated in these chats include not only Sunni and Jung Jun Young, but also FT Island's Che Jung Hoon, 
Roy Kim, CM Blues, Chong Hyun, highlights Jun Hyun, and more. This particular scandal is unlike anything that has ever happened and goes well beyond K-pop, extending into the corruption in the police and the government, and has shattered the illusion of quote-unquote clean idol images beyond what anyone could have anticipated. Expect the effects of the story to continue for the years to come. March 24, 2018 marks Shinwa's 20th anniversary. They have continued to be the longest running K-pop group in history and with its original lineup. Few K-pop groups stay together past the standard 7-year contract period, let alone past 10 and 15 years. But Shinwa has set the standard and example that groups can withstand company separation, life in general, and industry changes. In just a little over 20 years, K-pop has transformed the music market into a global empire that has reached the masses thanks to the internet, digital age, and the likes of platforms like YouTube. Who knows where it's going to be in the next 10 years, but as the genre continues to break records time and time again, it just goes to show that music has no language barrier. Well, there you have it, folks. These are just 25 of K-pop's most important moments in K-pop history. If you have seen my first video and are now watching this one, thank you so much for watching this a second time. What else do you think is worth noting? Hope you all enjoyed this video and learned something along the way. Please be sure to subscribe and hit that like button for me. Support me on Patreon. And while you're here, please check out many more of my works and see you next time.